Hi everyone, thank you for joining me tonight as usual on a Monday night, 8 o'clock live in the Sugar and Crumbs kitchen. So it's just me tonight with Maria and John, so you will see Maria as usual bobbing around the kitchen and um, filming what we're going to do tonight so she can make all those fabulous little uh, mini videos that she makes for you. And John is on the cameras and is going to be answering all questions, okay? So you do know that the live feed is very, very fast. We don't always manage to shout out everybody. So newbies, if you've just joined us tonight, shout out you're a newbie and where you are in the world, that'd be great, whether you're in the UK and where, and if you're around the world, that'd be great. If any of you can see the share button, you know what, press that, share now and share this with all your friends, that's what we want to do. So let me just talk about what we're going to do tonight. So as you know, I'm a bit of a one for winging it on the night. <laughs> <laughs> Don't across the those cherry blossoms, winging it on the day. I come up with this bright idea of what we're going to make and then I have to think how, how the hell am I going to make it. And as per usual, I always think, you know what, I'll have time to practice. I just never do. So Maria's got these bad boys out of the fridge for me. I'm going to put them back in the fridge because I don't want them to soften. Just to give you an idea of what we're making. So which camera should we go to, John? This one? So we're going to make these cherry blossoms, okay, as you can see they're all different sizes, they've been in the fridge, so I'm just getting hand signal, signals off Maria and John. So we're going to make these today, okay, so if we just go back to the main camera, over here, yeah, so, great, so Maria, do you want to put those back in the fridge for me? So these are really very easy, now for anybody who's new and doesn't know, you keep putting them in the fridge, yeah. so anybody who's new watching tonight, okay, let me just explain what we're all about. I am a hobby baker. I am not a professional baker. And all the baking I do here is in my own kitchen. It's not for products that I sell. It's actually products that I actually make and I give away to family and friends or the warehouse or whoever wants to eat it who knows me well and is happy, happy with the cleanliness in my kitchen. So if anybody's concerned about my hair down, my hair up, me touching my hair or whatever unfortunately we're on a live demo in my own kitchen just enjoying myself just enjoying myself so i want to make baking fun and it's all about showing you guys who are at home who are hobby bakers just like me or maybe you're thinking about baking and scared because you don't know about the basics or you're worried if you buy all your products and it all goes wrong and um, so what i want to do is encourage you guys to give it a go and if I can give it a go and wing it on the day, then you can give it a go. But there's a few basic things that you do need to know, and that is how to make a cake. And somebody asked me today, can I buy a cake and decorate that? Of course, why not? There's loads of companies out there that actually sell ready-made cakes. Your own supermarket does. Personally, I probably wouldn't buy one of those because they tend to be thin and scrawny. But if you want a decent cake, put, put just Google ready-made cakes. I know Sweet Success make them, and I know... Um, Windsor Cake Craft make them. So there's a free advertisement for those two guys. So they make amazing cakes that you can buy. Those make, they make uh, sponge cakes, fruit cakes, cupcakes, all sorts of things. Or as I say, pop along to your local supermarket and use those if you only want to do the decorating. There's actually no rules of what you need to do. It's what you're happy with. So I'm just gonna get John to shout out a few hellos for me. Um, <laughs> he's dying to sneeze. <laughs> So, um, John, do you want to shout a few hellos? Who's here? Yeah, we've got some newbies and we've also got plenty of regulars, so run to the list. We've got Lindsay McIver, Bridget Mason, Kat Riley, Julianne Barrett, Melanie Grant, Chris Geel, Emily Richens, Joanna Birkin, Sarah Byway, Helen Price, Julie Smith, Martin Dursley, ah, Sherilyn Martin Day. Dursley. I was just waiting for that name. So, Martin. You did an amazing flamingo cake a few weeks ago. Now, a few of you people have done flamingo cakes and have ch shared it. Martin happily posted the flamingo cake on my page, but he did one with just a comment only and one with the crumb coat. So, Martin, I've had to get you this way because I have private messaged you and private messaged you. So, you either don't use Messenger, but basically, I want you to post that um, flamingo cake again to me, but with the actual end flamingo cake that you made, because it's definitely worth sharing, and it's definitely worth letting everybody know who watches us, how you did it for the first time, the same as me. So John's waiting Back to a few there. more hello, we've got Sherilyn Degg, Jane Anderson, Kathleen Dornan, Lynn Sprules, Sue Simpson, 
got a newbie, we've got Emily Ansel, we've got Jodie Aldridge, who's a newbie in the West Midlands, Kelda Aspire, Jackie Richards, Gwen Welsh. So there's plenty of people joining us. That we've got Anna from Brazil. Sorry if I don't get everybody, but <laughs> it, this is all flying up really, really fast. Uh, we've got Rita Caddick, Susan Freeman, Helen Miles, Doreen Griffin. Right, so there's a lot lots, of, lots of people. Lots and lots, which is fantastic. So uh, we, I noticed somebody, uh, somebody pop up from Darwin in Australia. Oh, fantastic. Or possibly, no. Who is it? No, I think it was Darwin. Is that Darwin in Devon? No, Darwin in Blackburn, possibly. Darwin in Blackburn, oh, all right. <laughs> we'll get you wherever you are in Darwin. <laughs> anyway, the main thing is that you've enjoyed it, you've joined us. Now, again, if you're a newbie, we are a friendly bunch community here. So there's loads of regulars that John has shouted out there, people who I know, you just heard me reply back to Martin, I've asked him to do something. So the regulars here are really great. They're great at, because the feed goes fast, they're great at answering other people's questions. Now for you newbies, there's actually a delay here in the Sugar and Crumbs kitchen. There's a 30 second delay. So as fast as I say something, can you type it in? It takes 30 seconds to get to me and I've usually gone on to something else. So don't worry, it's not that we're ignoring you, it's just the, the, the feed is very fast. I do try and answer everybody tomorrow, albeit I'll give that job to Maria tomorrow because I'm in the warehouse all day. And um, and as I say, the community is really very friendly here and that's all we want, just friendly, happy, like-minded people joining in and they will answer questions for you. So, Ma I'm gonna Maureen go. is from Darwin in Lancashire. Oh, oh not too far away yeah. then, Maureen. Um, is it Maureen, did you say? So I think about 45 minutes, we're based in Stockport here. So let's get on and tell you what I'm gonna make today, okay? So I'm going to make a Victoria sponge now. Some of you are going to think, why is she making the Victoria sponge? You know, it's one of those simple basic recipes and I get asked several times a day. So I'm going to do this one so that we know that we've got it and then I can refer back to everybody on how to make the Victoria sponge. Also, I do get asked, can we add our flavoured icing sugars to the mix? Well, of course you can. So if you want to make a Victoria sponge, with one of the flavoured icing sugars, all you do is replace like for like. And I'm going to make two Victoria sponges tonight. I'm going to make one with the um, vanilla essence, okay, which we stock on our website. And then I'm going to make one with the strawberry. So it's going to be a strawberry and vanilla cake that we're going to put together. And we're going to freeze it as well so that I can use it in another live in a few weeks time. So let's, oh, let me tell you as well, what have we got new in the kitchen? So lots of things have had to change for us, okay? So first of all, delivery costs, they've changed unfortunately. Like everything, everything goes up. So our prices have gone up slightly. We've tried to be very competitive, but what, uh, free delivery still, but it's going to be on orders over 40 pound. Okay, and orders that are under £15, unfortunately those prices have gone up really because it really isn't feasible for us to pack an order under £15. By the time I've printed it off, got the warehouse lads to pack it, put it together and everything else, what profit margin there was in it is actually used up in that. And anybody who has a business will know exactly where I'm coming from. Okay, so those things have changed. I've also taken the sale off, but I've also re reduced lots of things. So our icing sugars now are $2.99 as opposed to $3.45, and that's going to be the standard price. Um, that gives us enough margin so that when we've got a sale on, we can do something on the sales. And it also, um, all our suppliers, all our little cake shops, it gives them margin as well, okay? Um, I've also reduced all the nifty nozzles and I've reduced the bundles as well. So they're the genuine Russian piping tips. There's also some new bundles on there and I've put this one, I'm going to demo it tonight and it's the tutu and the ruffles. These are two fabulous nozzles and I've put them together for you for 5 99 so That's two nozzles there for 5 99 and we'll do those on a cupcake later. And then the other thing is, John and I, we've got loads of flavoured icing sugars, loads and loads, and we want to change some of them. And we, we want to change some of them and update some of them as well. But some of them we feel that are worth keeping, but people don't always buy them and try them um, because they end up sticking with their regulars. So I have put a taster bundle together, and that is eight bags of flavoured icing sugar. Now there's no swapsies. This is the eight bags. And in the eight bags, you get banana split, blueberry, orange zest, gingerbread, key lime, sherbet, 
pineapple and Turkish July. Now all those flavours are amazing, okay, and they actually work out at £2 a bag, which is the sale price, so it's £16 for the bundle. So it's a massive bargain, but it also gives you an opportunity to taste those flavours. So that's a new bundle on the website. All the other bundles have all disappeared. So when you go to the icing sugars, you buy them on their own, but the only bundle is those. Then, because the sale did so well for the bulk bags, the two and a half kilos and five kilos, we've kept them at the sale price. So the two and a half kilos now is £10 and the five kilos is £20. So you um, bakers who like to buy a particular flavour in bulk, remember it's only the top 15 flavours. I have left those at the sale price and made them their new price. We've got lots of new goodies in the kitchen today. So I'm going to try and whiz through this quickly, okay? So um, some gold and silver modelling paste, okay? We have had this before and um, I didn't really tell people much about it, so we do want to use this on a demo in a couple of weeks. But this is modelling paste, so this is really very, very hard, okay? And then we have silver and gold sugar paste. So this is really nice and soft. You don't get as much, you only get 100 grams in each one. And then we've got the pearl modelling paste. These are great for making roses with, okay? So I keep saying okay, okay, it's really bad. We've got new cupcake boxes in. They come in silver and in pinks. And these actually, they come up with this brilliant idea, which I think is fab. So you've got the spotty metallic and you've got the spotty pink and blue. And they now come in with an insert that you can do six large cupcakes or 12 mini cupcakes because a lot of you want to do your mini, your fairy cakes, and then struggle for having a cake box. So this one comes with two usages. Okay, so they're on the website as well. And as I say, they come in metallic, which is gold and silver. And then they come in the baby blue size. And the bigger boxes are for a 10 inch cake at the moment. I don't know if they're gonna bring out any more, but at the moment, but again, as I say, two colors. Um, there's lots of other things here, cutters, maybe we'll go through them at the end. And I've also brought in, as you know, I am a colour splash girl, but I couldn't resist this one. So this is Sugar Flare. Now before I started using colour splash, I only ever used Sugar Flare. And uh, the reason I brought this one in is because it brought this fabulous gold paste and this silver. It's called Antique Silver. And you get eight different colours in the pot, concentrated, and they're on the website as well. But I really like those. What would you like me to do, John? So, what I'd... so these come in, okay, in eight colours. You're going to get a nice blue, which I know is a great one. Christmas red, gold, melon. Um, you get a party green, uh, a midnight black, an extra white, and uh, a silver. Uh, antique silver so those are in a set of eight and they're on the website and also i've got the gold and the silver separately if you just wanted to buy those colors so i thought they were great for you to give them a go so i've got john and uh, maria doing hand signals you know what it is like now with our new camera system it's really funny because if i get distracted <laughs> i have to remember to look up to see which camera they're on so are you all with me guys everything okay does anybody want to ask me anything is there a difference between the baby and the mini nifty nozzles? No, the same size. Yeah, brilliant. So before I get started, I am going to clip my hair up and just quickly wash my hands a moment. So before anybody says, oh, she didn't wash her hands, which I got the other week. So I'll just quickly pop it up and because I'm absolutely on fire in here. Uh, John and Maria, as usual, are freezing, but I'm on fire. So it's definitely an age thing. Give me a moment. Get on there and talk, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you want to shout out some more hellos, John? Uh, yes. Was so just... there any questions that popped up? Do the cake boxes come in multi packs? I haven't put them on in multi packs because they're in packs of 20. So, I mean, if somebody wanted 20, they could message me and I can do that for them. Does anybody think they would buy 20? Because if they do, I'll get them in stock. Okay, a few more hellos. I'm not sure where I finished all the hellos before, but we've got Jan Jarvis, Caroline Jordan, Priya Canadia, Kate Evans, um, Nancy Craig, who's in Oban, 
Uh, Karen Bailden, Julie Crompton. <laughs> no worries. Right, okay then, so let's get on with making um, our buttercream. So I just need Maria to do one thing. I've run in and out. As you all know, I have two kitchens. This is mine and John's personal kitchen and it's the biggest one. And then we have a small kitchen, which I call the sugar and crumbs, crumbs kitchen. And I think I must have a memory like a sieve today because the amount of times I've actually locked that up and had to run back in there and uh, reopen it again. So rather than send Maria off to do that, I'm just gonna get her to wash that for me because we're gonna need it. Pop soap and water, please. In fact, John's gonna do it for me. So let me just move that there. And then let's get the cake mix on. So I might disappear. What camera are we on, John? Me and The main one that they can't see over there. What we've got there. And I need that back as soon as possible. Oh. <laughs> so what we'll do is, which camera are we on, the big one? Me and Okay, right. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the basic Victoria sponge. I always make an eight ounce sponge, okay? And that will fill two tins. If you are doing a six ounce sponge, then all you're going to do is reduce it by one egg. So every two ounces, up or down, so if you're going up, you add an egg for every two ounces, and if you're going down, you take off an egg, if that makes perfect sense. So we're gonna make an eight ounce sponge, okay? All the ingredients are eight ounces apart from the egg. So in this particular recipe, this is going to be four eggs. Okay, when we go to the 10 ounce sponge, we're, sorry, don't add one egg, we have two eggs. So we're gonna add two more eggs for a 10 ounce, because it's two eggs per four ounces. Is that right, or have I got that wrong? Got that wrong, it's one egg, isn't it? I don't know. It's five eggs, yeah. So basically it's half the ingredients. So if you're gonna do 10 ounce, five eggs. So just divide your eggs by half. And then 12, it will be six eggs. I knew there's, there's some easy way of doing it and I might probably have just confused you completely. I was right the first time, reduce it by an egg, add an egg if you're going up. So what we're going to do is we're going to cream in our butter. Um, I use stork margarine. You can use any margarine you want. If you want to use butter, technically you're making a Madeira cake. So let me just put this in this mixer. So I'm not quite sure what you can see at the moment, guys. So I'm gonna get both mixers going. So I think John's just going to turn me around a minute. So I'm going to get both mixers going and both mixers have now got eight ounces of stork margarine in. You can use any margarine you want. I just personally use stork. And then in there we are going to add, in this one, the brown one is the normal Victoria sponge. We are going to add eight ounces of caster sugar. And then if John just comes back, in this one, the one with the flavoured icing sugar, we're going to add eight ounces of strawberry milkshake. So, let me just see. Eight ounces. And ounces in grams is 226. So let me just do ounces. I'm an old girl, 55 years of age. I'm in pounds and ounces. Sorry guys, so you youngsters out there, you know what, you're bright enough to work it out yourself. Get onto Google and you can do that. But us oldies, can you pass me a spoon, John, please? But us oldies, we still work in, uh, younger oldies, <laughs> we still work in pounds and ounces. So we've got two ounces of, uh, sorry, eight ounces of strawberry milkshake going in the second mix. So we're gonna pop those in there. Now at this point, when you make a Victoria sponge, this is when you can beat the living daylight out of it. So, John, I don't know what you can see there. You've got just the side of me on. So because this has got icing sugar in, I'm just gonna slowly beat it so it incorporates all the icing sugar because I'm not sure if you can see, I turned it on straight away and blasted the living daylight out of it. And then I am just going to drop down the other one and turn this one on, okay? And we're done. So let's beat the living daylight out of those then. <coughs> so we're gonna beat 
feed these until they're both nice, white and fluffy. So you will see that Maria does get in my way. Any of you newbies, okay, you will see she gets in my way. Don't worry about that. And I will have to shout louder now that the mixers are on. It's very difficult for you to hear. I know that, guys. But I can't actually show you anything unless I turn the mixers on. So let me just do this. So just let me show you something for a second. Let me get another spatula. So I'm going to have John and Maria. So I've just put in the icing sugar in the first one with the margarine. And you will see, so are we, can you see on the camera? So you will see this is a really soft, silky mix. Okay, really nice and nice and soft. So that one changes quite quickly. This one, which is the sugar and the uh, uh, sugar and the margarine, you will see it's still quite thick. Is that still? Can you see that, John? So you'll see that that's still thick. It doesn't matter which one you use. It, you know, it's just whatever you prefer. And I just know that everybody is always keep asking me, can I use the icing sugars in a sponge mix? Of course you can. And then what I'm going to show you tonight is, is that it doesn't make any difference to the cake. So we're going to give this a really good beating. this mix is okay so we can see how lovely and silky it is can you all see it really well up yeah so that this is the one with the flavored icing sugar really is lovely and it smells gorgeous as well doesn't so it? what it's exactly is in, in the bowl at the moment so in the bowl at the moment is eight ounces of stalk margarine you can use any margarine and eight ounces of flavored icing sugar yeah this is because we're going to make this cake into a strawberry milkshake and then in the other bowl, this one's a bit firmer, is that high enough? Yeah, it's a bit firmer. And this is just normal caster sugar and normal, mar well, stalk margarine and normal sugar. This is your standard recipe. Now it's only at this stage that you can beat the living daylights out of this mix. After that, you need to be a bit more careful. And the idea is, is to get your mix really light and fluffy. So I'm just gonna blast the normal one, okay? So that just needs a little bit more. This one's already light and fluffy. And um, I don't know what I've done. I think that's a pattern of color. Okay, we're just going to feed the living daylights out of this. 
got John working tonight, okay, washing up, he doesn't do that very often, let me tell you. But having said that, he does do all the cooking here in the house, I actually cook nothing. So John does all the cooking, all the shopping, I do all the baking and the washing up. And believe me, I work hard after he's been cooking in this kitchen. I, tell you what, I don't know what it is with men, but they have to use every utensil, dish and pan in the kitchen. Who's got a husband like that? I'm sure you've all got one. Right, so okay, so now this is mixed in. Doesn't take long to uh, do a Victoria sponge. And then I'm just going to incorporate this in here, second. And I've got my oven temperature on 140. So let me just stick that in there, make sure it's all well incorporated. So you will be able to see how well incorporated it is. This is the strawberry milkshake one. You see that, John? Okay, so that's really well incorporated. And it got well incorporated pretty quick. And you can see the lightness in the colour as well. Okay, so we're going to put these on now and we're going to start adding our eggs. Four eggs for this recipe. So if you're going to do a six ounce mix, three eggs. Eight ounce mix, which is what we're doing, four eggs. Ten ounce mix, five eggs. 12 ounce mix, six eggs, and John's doing hand signals for me. <laughs> Knew he had uses. So let's turn this on, and let's get these eggs in. We're gonna add them one at a time. So, I John can see that. We're just gonna add them one at a time and incorporate them. Now sometimes, your mix can curdle. Do not panic if it curdles. At that stage, you should have your flour ready, okay? So have your flour ready, and if your mix starts to curdle, grab a spoon and start putting a spoonful of flour in. I only add self-raising flour, and I use the McDougal's um, either normal self-raising flour or the Supreme. Now tonight, I'm actually using this one. This is just their normal one, I'm quite happy. And it's actually, it's actually cheaper than the Sponge Supreme one. The Sponge Supreme one is actually excellent. And if you want a white cake, that's the best one to use. So you can use whatever self-raising self -raising flour you wish. That's my personal choice. Do I add any raisin agents? No, I don't. So I don't add any baking powder, soda or anything. I don't add a pinch of salt. I don't do any of that. So the one thing I do need, John, is I boil the water. Can you put some water in the dish? So we've got one egg in. Let's put our second egg in, each one. So we're going to get them mixed in. It's really funny with the kitchen aid, but how many I've got, each of them doing different speeds and different things. And then I'm just going to add my third egg. A fourth egg, fourth egg. It doesn't really matter when you have them, just have them one at a time. Now, some people do do an all in one Victoria sponge, and you know what? I've done that as well. But I was always taught this method, and it's a method that I just keep to all the time, and I know it works. And sometimes I've had a bit of a disaster with the all in one, and sometimes it's been great. So I'm not really sure where I've gone wrong, but it really is down to your personal choice. I'm not trying to get you guys to change your method, I'm just showing you my method, yeah? So I don't know if there's any questions coming in. So if there is, I'll get John to shout them out. One lady is just, you turn the on. It's just asking about the recipe. The recipe, if it's not posted at the moment, it will be posted at the end. Uh, the recipe is on the website, I think. Yeah, is Maria's it at actually, the top of the post already? Yeah, it's at the top of the post already. Okay. So this is the one now, the mix with the icing sugar. Okay. So I'm just going to give that a stir now. So you can see that it has got a slight curdle. Do not panic about that. Okay. You must, at this stage, stir the mix, okay? Sometimes in the bottom, depending which mixer you've got, sometimes at the bottom, the egg doesn't always go around, so go, mix in, so you must make sure. So as I say, we've got eight ounces of flour, 
and we're going to add that. I'm just going to get rid of the curdle on this. So if you do get a slight curdle to your mix, do not panic. Don't think that's it, my mix is ruined. It really isn't. Now once you start adding the flour, you must fold it in, okay? Under no circumstances do you mix. So this is the end of your mixing days. Yeah, so we've got the flour, so you must fold in. If you're not sure how to fold in, if you're not sure how to fold in, you just lift it up and fold it in. Why do you do this? Because we don't want to knock out all the air that we've just put into the mix. So we're just gonna fold that in. Now, what we do need to do in the other mix, I'll go back to that. What we do need to do in the normal Victoria sponge is add some flavoring. Now, Maria, here we are. There we go, found them. So in this one, because it's an eight ounce mix, for every four ounces, you put one teaspoonful of flavoring. So I'm actually using the Fair Trade Organic Vanilla Bean Extract by Taylor and College. Okay, it's on our website. Also the Dr. Oka flavorings on our website. Both of those are good. Just gonna turn that one back on again. And I'm just going to continue folding this in. So. so you've got to keep folding it in now until all the flour is mixed in and you don't see any loose egg or anything like that. So at this stage, I'm now going to add two tablespoons of cooled boiled water. What that means is it's not boiling, it's off the boil, okay? Some people add cold, some people add boiling, and use cool boiled water. Again, it's up to you, okay? Why do I do this? No idea. I was told to do it by my grandma years ago, and I've got to be honest, I forgot all about it. And I did go to a cake class about four years ago, and the lady there on that cake class did it, and I thought, oh gosh, yeah, I remember that now. And uh, it's amazing, really, you just need reminding. So, can you see that room? So I'll just show you guys what this mix looks like now. Don't know which camera on. So you can see now, this is the strawberry milkshake mix. Oh, and it smells. Can you smell that? I made a pina colada one earlier today for decorating on, and that smells good as well. So this is the strawberry one. Then we're gonna stop our normal mix. There's a flour yeah. suit. Well, to be fair, when you use a good quality flour, you don't need to sieve it. Watch this bad boy. So, which camera can we go on? To do what? Let me just show you. When you use a really good flour, you don't need to sieve it. So, you can do if you want to, but you really don't need to. Okay? So, which camera? So, if I just pour this in, you should be able to see. Look at it. It's just pouring out. How lovely is that? I mean, that just pours out. That's just so fine and lovely. There's not a lump in that. And then if I get the spoon now, there's just no lumps in it at all. Can you see that clearly enough? Can you see that clearly enough, John? Yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay, so if you're using maybe not so much of a quality flour, then possibly yes, but with this particular brand, you don't need to. So we are now going to add the flour and I've just done a really dumb thing. I can't remember now which one was the weighed one. Sugar. Was this the weighed one? <laughs> Showing you that one. And then, so what we're gonna do now is, we're gonna add this one in. And where's my spatula? So I'm going to have to use both spatulas because I didn't bring in enough. So what I'm gonna do is scrape all this off and then just clean it. And I'll just give my cloth to John to rinse out. There you go, John. So let's fold this in now. I'm going to fold it in. Just going to let Maria take a quick video and then I'm just going to show it to you guys. So when you're folding it in, just lift it up. Yeah. So lift it up. There we go. 
Do any of you use our sugars to make sponges with? I know lots of you do, and some of you yeah, have thought differently. Yeah, we've got a few comments, yes. Yeah, and have you, have all of you done, thought the same as me? It's a really nice, light, silky mixture. And Wendy just said that, uh, Flora actually says, it actually says on the bag that there's no need to sip it. Oh, fantastic. Well done, Wendy. I know Wendy, that's Wendy Preston, isn't it? Yeah. So I know Wendy tends to use good quality products. Well, not tends, she does use good quality products. And uh, she actually always uses the same ones as me. So again, two tablespoons of cooled boiled water. Yeah. So we're just going to fold that in. I don't know which camera we're on. John. This one? Brilliant. Okay. So, can you see that, Maria? Yeah. Okay. So we're on this one. So we're just going to fold this in. Now, I've got two um, different colour baking pans today. So I just need John to go back to the camera. Which camera we're on? So, I use a spray, you can use margarine, it doesn't matter what you do with your tin. The one thing I will say, invest in a quality tin. I think there's nothing worse than having tins. Could I have that clock back again, John, please? There's nothing worse than having a tin that you're baking with and it's rusty and it's grotty and you know what, make sure you buy a good quality one. And it, I've used these time and time again. These are Paul Hollywood and I also use this brand all the time. And it's Alan Silverdale or Silverwood. Let's just have a look. It's yeah, Silverwood. Alan Silverwood. Okay, brilliant. All the time. And it does say not dishwasher safe, and I'm a bit of a one for putting everything in the dishwasher. So if I hadn't put them in, that would have stayed a really nice shiny silver. But because I put them in the dishwasher, uh, I've taken a little shine off. But I've had these since 2013, used them many, many times, not an ounce of rust. I've had the Paul Hollywood ones. I don't sell these pans, by the way. Uh, I used to, but I don't sell them. But I sell, you know, you'll have to get them from somewhere else. Um, but no rust, and I just think it looks better. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the cake star release. You can you can either margarine your pans and give them a dust in a flour, um, or you can use cake release, this one, which is a spray, or you can use the brush, or you can use melted butter. It really is your choice. So I'm just going to got a dodgy spray on one of them. So, so there we go. Let's give that a light spray. I'm going to put in some grease proof paper in the bottom. So I've got a, a jar of cake release there and I don't know what I've done with the spray cap. I know another lady's got the same problem. So uh, it's still clogged up. So it does one spray and then it doesn't do any more until I come to use it again. So I have to remember when I finish this bottle to save this to put on there. So let's just do this one. So in the gold pan, I am going to divide the strawberry milkshake one. So can you all remember? <laughs> so that when I take them out of the oven, I know. Now, last time I showed you how to do this, I weighed it. But I'm not going to muck around with weighing now. I'm just going to do it half and half. It's not the strawberry. The strawberry. So let's just do this again. So we're just going to put on half the mix. I'm going to guess it. Make sure you get everything out. And then we're going to put them in the oven for on 140 for about half an hour to 40 minutes. Okay. Smells fab this. So if any of you have used these, feel free. I remember when I started selling the flavoured icing sugars way back in 2013, and a lady was actually was the lady who told me, and she went, Carol, I made my daughter a strawberry milkshake um, flavoured cake, just replacing the sugar, and it was amazing. All the kids loved it. My favourite one, we used to do a flavour called coffee. Um, we've now changed it to vanilla latte, so it's a bit milder, and I just love that. So I just love it. I don't even put the sponges together. I make just the sponge, and then I actually, with some of the coffee flavouring, I just um, add water to it, 
sorry, may I? add water to it and drizzle it over the top of the cake. So no jam, nothing, just a light piece of sponge with that um, coffee drizzle. So do give that one a try if you've got the vanilla latte going. So what we're gonna do now is, we're gonna put the, this one in the oven. So this is the strawberry milkshake one. So we're gonna put this in the oven and it's 2041. Okay, so 2041, and we're going by this time at the top of here because my ovens have all got different times on them. <laughs> so we're going by the steamer there. So that one's in the oven there. So let's get the next two tins. So the Allen Silverwood ones, okay, we are just going to spray those again, exactly the same. You don't need to put this in. I, just, I don't know why, just have it really. So I just put those in. All it is, parchment paper. And I think I, think I picked up a whole bundle of them from Lakeland or B&M Bargains, all different sizes. You can cut them out as well, but you know, my days when I was younger and I was budgeting for everything, I used to cut them out of uh, parchment paper. And uh, you know what you do, you cut them into square, fold it up and then circle and get a dodgy circle. And now I like to buy these. So this one here is now we're going to divide it and this is going to be the normal Victoria sponge mix. And the reason I'm showing you this is, is when they both come out the oven, you're not going to be able to tell the difference apart from taste. So when somebody tells you, you can't use the flavoured icing sugar, to replace your cake mix. You can say, well, actually you can. And I saw Carol do it and I saw her do it live. So there we go. Also, when people keep asking me, I can pop them back to this video then and tell them what to do. So I'm going to get Maria to move the pots for me and wash the spatula. And then we're gonna get on with our blossom cake. So in fact, John is going to do this. Let me just get that off, John. I'll give you those. We don't have any fancy people in the kitchen here helping us. It's just us working as a team. People who don't know us, John and I are husband and wife. And uh, people say we work very well together. <laughs> do we work well together, love? <laughs> Depends, or do on we put on, <laughs> depends on the day. Or do we put on a good show, love? <laughs> yeah. He's a good one, really. Eh? There's not many men who have been putting up with this in the kitchen, is there? So, uh, so all I've done is I've just divided the mix by eye. You can weigh it if you want to, and I'm not weighing it. So, uh, just the spatula, if I can. Yeah. Now, have you noticed guys, I'm on a diet and I've not done what I always do. I don't know about you guys, but I love licking the spoon and the bowl and John thinks it's disgusting because it's got raw egg in. But how many of you just love doing that? And I, let, let us know and put the thumbs up because I want John to see just how many people do that. So John, do you want to just let me know how many people do that? So, uh, no, you're, I, you're on your own. I'm on my own, am I? Well, no, I've got a 30 second delay. So, um, but because I'm on a diet, I've been a good girl, and I passed those over to John straight away. So here you go, John. Look. John. There you go. So can you just turn the tap off now, so we can get on. I don't need any of those things back here. So I'm just going to put these in the other oven, and these are going in at 20:45. Yeah. So 20:45, they're going in. So we've got two, we've got the um, strawberry milkshakes went in at 20.40, according to my timer on my steamer. 21. And 20.41, let's be precise, yeah? <laughs> and then the other ones have gone in at 20.45. So let's get rid of that. Let's have a little bit of a clean up. So that can go, Maria, let's get rid of that. All this can go, John, just put it all out of the way. And then I'm just gonna have a quick wipe down, guys, because I need all this area again. So just give me a minute, let me get my cloth washed. I'm ready again. 
Yeah, there's a few people who like licking the bowl. Yeah, favourite bit. It's the best bit, isn't it? To be fair, you don't even want to eat the cake sometimes, you just want to lick the bowl. Do you do it, Maria? Yes. Yes, see? John thinks it's shocking. So. He couldn't believe it how much I loved it. But um, I have advised a few of you to buy those bowl scrapers. We sell them on the website. So if you really don't want to lick it because you're on a diet, buy, invest in one of those bowl scrapers and that will get out everything and give you an extra cupcake as well. So, so we're cleaned up. Can I give you that for the wash? Thank you. Right, so we're back again. So I don't need the flavoring anymore, don't need that. So John, which camera are we on? Right. And then, do you want to pass me those cakes, John, that I made earlier today? All the ones. All oh, four. Yeah. So I made these today, okay? Four sponges, and we're going to put these together and make our blossom cake. So what we're going to do is, you all know that I cannot crumb coat a cake, okay? And you all know I can't sugar paste a cake as well. So this is why, when you're a hobby baker, don't need to panic, because it doesn't have to be perfect. There's a fabulous new fashionable word now, and it's called rustic. And I tell you, I couldn't have been any happier when somebody came up with that idea. So we are going to make it rustic. So let me get my spatula there, John. Now, these are pina colada. And they were done this afternoon, yeah? And you'll see nice and light and very level. Because I cut them or baked them on a low heat, can you see they're all flat? So I don't actually have to um, chop them off or do anything like that. So we are going to just put a little bit on this board of our buttercream, okay? And then we are going to jam this one. We're doing that. Is there any chance you could run back and run over the recipe with the flavoured icing sugar, please? Right, okay. Exactly the same as a normal um, sponge. John, can I have another one of these, please? So exactly the same as a normal sponge. So the recipe is eight ounces of margarine. I use stalk, you use what you want. So eight ounces of margarine. Then eight ounces of sugar, okay? So we've made one by the same as a normal Victoria sponge recipe, but one with the flavored icing sugar. So in the normal Victoria sponge, we've used eight ounces of caster sugar. With the one with the flavored sugar, we've used eight ounces of flavored sugar. And today we've used strawberry. This is what I've used for you guys. This one I've used pina colada, yeah? So uh, use pina colada. So what I'm gonna do, and then, you blend them together and you, that's the only time you can beat the living daylights out of it. Then you add your four eggs, one at a time. Then you add your uh, flour, fold it in. Two tablespoons of cooled boiled water. Keep folding in, divide between your tins and there you go. It works exactly the same. And these two are the normal and two are pina colada. Okay, nice and flat. So on this layer, we're going to do a four layer Victoria sponge. So what we're going to do is, this is our cake. I'm going to put jam on this one. Some of you are going to be surprised because I normally use lemon curd. It's my favorite. But because some of you comment that I only ever use lemon curd, I've decided to use strawberry jam. You can use whatever strawberry jam you want. And in fairness, we ran out today, completely forgot all about it. I've got cupboards full of lemon curd. I didn't think when Laura was here on Thursday doing the marshmallows, she used up the last of the strawberry jam. So we've actually just had to run to the local co-op and pick up co-op's uh, co own brand. Normally I buy a premium brand. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take one layer out from underneath, yeah. And if you notice, you'll see I turn that upside down. And then on this one, we are going to add, John's laughing about something there. So what are you laughing about, John? Joe Richard has asked what, what size tins. I'm using eight inch tins. But you did put tins, you said. <laughs> right. So here now, I'm just gonna do a layer 
of the pina colada buttercream. So when I was getting the kitchen ready before, I was thinking, right, I need to make strawberry buttercream, pina colada buttercream. So because this is the pina colada cake, I didn't want strawberry milkshake buttercream on this. So this smells amazing as well. So we're just gonna do a nice layer on here. Now, you can slap this on as thick as you want or as thin as you want. You can pipe it on if you want to. But as we're going to crumb coat this, really doesn't matter. So then we're going to take this one. I'm going to stick that on. If you notice, I stick them on upside down. Yeah. And then we're going to go back to the jam. I don't know who's going to have this cake, to be fair, because I know the girls in the office had their eye on it, Maria. Um, I've got a, a lovely friend who walks my dogs for me. And he's got two elderly um, parents in their 80s, one in their 90s, one, one who's 90, is he 90 old now? 94, I think. 94, and his mum's 86, I think. And uh, they usually get the big cakes, so like last week's dome cake, whenever I do a big cake, they usually get the big cakes. And then the cupcakes and all the other things, either go into the warehouse, or in fact the warehouse have had nothing this week. You have, haven't you? So the warehouse have had actually had nothing this week, they've really missed out this year actually right so we've got that on there and then we're going to get our last cake i'm going to turn that upside down as well and we're going to set that on there isn't that fabulous sam now at this stage now okay a traditional victoria sponge i don't know whether you know this a traditional foot Victoria sponge doesn't have buttercream. It should only be sponge and jam with a dusting of icing sugar over the top. But for some reason, us guys, we all like buttercream. So I've actually buttercreamed it. So I'm just gonna put those in the bin. John, could you put those over on the side ready for when those cakes come out of the oven? Yeah, so let's get this ready. And then this is where we come to the rustic bit. So I am going to crumb coat this cake now. And anybody who knows me and watches me on a regular basis knows that I'm not very good at crumb coating either. So we're just going to slap this stuff on. And again, this is why I say, you hobby bakers, you know what? Just do it my way, your way is what makes you happy. So let me just clean up. It's always nice, if you can, to keep your kitchen nice and clean. So let me just give you that, John. Then we're going to get our buttercream. Now, when you are buttercreaming, yeah, you can pipe it on, which makes it really easy, um, or you can put it on with a palette knife. And we're just going to put it on with a palette knife, okay? So, because as I say, we are doing a rough coat. So a rough crumb coat, this is called. And then I'm going to put this in the fridge just to set for a little bit why I show you how to make the blossom flowers. So I've made quite a few of the blossom flowers already because they do take a bit of time. And I will tell you that this cake is not my idea. I actually spotted it on YouTube and it was actually on Wilton to be fair. So I've not copied their cake. In fact, it was a cupcake they showed, showed you today. And, uh, but they had a picture of the blossom cake and cherry blossom cake and I thought you know what let's give that a go Maria so this afternoon I sat in there and uh, I was quite pleased at my first attempt and I think if I can do it then all you guys can do it as well so my only hard bit is to be able to get you to see it so John will have to worry about that so as you can see we're slapping this buttercream on all the way around you might find your cake might slip a bit, don't worry. Now, if you were gonna make this into a tiered cake for a wedding cake, then you must dowel this, okay? You must dowel it. And if you're going to make it into a cake with loads of decorations on, then make sure you dowel it. But for what we're doing, you don't need to do that. And if you don't know what doweling is, it means that you put in, I use jumbo straws, some people use plastic plastic solid straws and some people use wooden food grade wooden dowels really is your personal choice 
I prefer to use the jumbo straws because I feel that when the cake goes through the center of the straw, it gives it a bit more grip. But on this particular cake, we're not doing this. So again, I do a lot in my time on a Monday. So any of you guys who are watching and then afterwards you go, well, that wasn't very professional. Just remember that in the time I'm here, I do try and show you a lot. So, you know, I'm showing you how to bake two cakes, crumb coat it and decorate it. So let's just fill in a few bits. Now you can use an offset spatula, makes it easier. You can use a flat spatula. It really does depend what you prefer, okay? You can dip this in hot boiling water, get a jug full of hot boiling water, dip this in, make it nice and hot so that it all smooths out nicer. But you know what? I like good old rustic and that's what we're gonna stick with. Good old rustic. So John, is there any questions? Um, no, not at the moment. So guys, do you want to ask me any questions? Just why I do this? Oh, had a question, do you use butter or stock for the buttercream? <sighs> right, so I only use butter, right? Buttercream is given the name buttercream exactly for that word, buttercream. Now, I do know some of you use stalk margarine or any other margarine and that's absolutely fine and the people who use that are generally because they're vegetarians um, or some people just prefer to use it but I've, I've got to be honest I cannot stand the taste of it it knocks me absolutely sick even when I use our flavoured icing sugars I can't disguise it I like it in the bake but I certainly don't like it on a buttercream so John oh it's okay sir so I'm just going to I'm out of breath and I don't know why I'm out of breath. I've not actually gone anywhere ever. I've only uh, crumb coated this. So let's just put the top on. So I might just have enough buttercream left to To decorate it. Thankfully I've pre-done some already. So there we go. So what time is it for our cakes? So this is just a nice smooth coat and for those guys who want to do a naked cake all you've got to do is, is go around now Scrape off as much of this as you can to see the sponge, and then you've got a naked cake. How cool is that? So, let me get my cloth. Why my hands? Where did it go? Over here. So, Maria. I never knew who's doing the baking, me and Maria. She's that close. So, let's put this in the fridge. Let's just get this cleaned up, and then let's get on to the decorating. So, we're going to make two lots of buttercream. Yeah. How long does the cake keep? How long does the cake keep? Well, with our lot, not very long. Um, personally, I like to eat a cake fresh. So I usually like to eat a fresh cake within three days. If I'm not going to eat it till weekend, I will put this in the fridge, okay? I will put it in the fridge, make it nice and cool. I'll bring it out for a couple of hours before I want to eat it, and it's perfectly fine then, okay? If you want to, with the sponges, you can actually freeze the sponges. And we, let me just put this in the fridge a minute, and then I actually froze some the other week. Let me just put this in the fridge. Don't know if we made room in the fridge, we didn't. So, hang on a second. Sorry, guys, I didn't think about making room in the fridge. Right, so, cake is in the fridge. 
it's always a good idea to make room in the fridge first. So John, as I say, John does all the cooking here, so he's just had to rearrange himself. So I got on two bowls of butter before. So do you want to just pass us those two bowls of butter? So we're going to use, we're going to come back to this afterwards. So, okay, so let me fix this in. So all I did just to save a bit of time is I just gave the butter a really good beating. So we're going to make two lots of buttercream. So I'm going to make normal buttercream and the Queen of Couture buttercream because a lot of you did ask about this. So let me just go through this again. So just hang on a moment, guys, while I attach my attachments. Any more questions, John? Are you all enjoying it so far? So how much buttercream would you make for that size of cake? How much do you need to do what you've just done? Well, what I've done there is I've just made um, 250 grams of butter and 500 grams of icing sugar, and that covered that whole cake. And I've got a little bit left, which I'm going to use to crumb coat the cake again. I will just have just enough to go around it again. As I say, I am doing this rustic, so uh, we'll have enough to just go around. Uh, and uh, you saw I put some in the middle as well. So I just put on two lots of butter, and when I put the butter in, butter is yellow in colour. I only use value butter. Now, where I use premium um, products for cake make making, because I use our flavoured icing sugar, I only use value butter because really I want the full flavour of the icing sugar. So what we're going to do is we are going to just turn the butter back on. So I put it in ready and gave it a good beating. So I'm just going to give it a quick beating again. And then we're going to do some decorating. So what we're going to do is when I make flavoured icing sugar, when I make buttercream, and this is the same for the genuine Russian bag and tips, nifty nozzles, okay? When I make those, I, this is my uh, mix, a simple buttercream mix. So I will use 250 grams of unsalted butter and 500 grams of flavoured icing sugar. When you're using the Russian piping pitch, you need double, okay? Because you will use a lot. If you don't want it so sweet, use half salted and half unsalted, and that way you get it a less sweet mixture. So I hope that you got that. Great, thank you. So I'm just giving this butter a quick mix again. unsalted butter but it's personal preference some people say all oh, that icing sugar was sweet and I do have to laugh because I sit there and think well you have just had sugar 100% there's not really much more I can do about that sugar is sweet so and when I do point that out to people they go oh yeah right okay then but if you do want to tone down the sweetness then do 50% uh, unsalted and 50% salted and that will take the sweetness away and I do know some people and I'm sure there's plenty of you here that do full salted that's I love salt but that's just a bit too much for me so maybe I've got a sweet tooth I don't know so we went in there in the oven at 22 9 22 41 yeah 20 to 9 yeah been in 23 minutes so let's give them a full half an hour and then let me just add the icing sugar to these so what we're going to do is when i wasn't thinking which is a bit dumb of me really i didn't bring in the complimenting ones to go with this so i have to think about it so this one here is my mix okay so this has just got butter in 250 grams of butter but we're then going to make the queen of couture mix which has got 250 grams of butter and 150 grams 125 grams grams of trex isn't it so the trex is vegetable shortening 
Crikey, I don't even know how to get in this packet. Oh, we have this one open here. So, so we want 125. John, I could go clean spatula, please. Look. Thank you very much. So let's get this on the scales. So we're making two types of butter. Okay, and the reason we're doing that is just to go over what the girls did, Valerie and Christina, just before Christmas. So this recipe is now in grams. Okay, so we've got 250 grams of butter, and I've used unsalted. And then we're using half again, 125 of Trex, which is vegetable fat, not animal fat, vegetable fat. It's very white. Some people make all their buttercream with Trex and you'll find that the cakes that you get from, uh, that are really, really white are made with Trex as well. So that's 125 and we're gonna put it in the, brown, in the bronze one. So we've got a copper mix and a bronze mix. Just pop that in the bin. So let's get all this in. Sorry, Maria. <laughs> it's gone in now. So <laughs> I never know which bit she wants to film. But anyhow, I think she can see the two different colours there. So let's just show you. There's two different colours there. Yeah, so you can see the normal butter and you can see the tracks. So I'm just going to mix this in just to make sure I've got it from the bottom of the bowl, scrape down the sides. Yeah. And then we're going to give this a whiz. Now, my cake is a pina colada cake that we're actually decorating. And I didn't bring in another bag of pina colada, I don't think I did. I actually thought I weighed some icing sugar out of the board. Yeah, I don't think I did. So that's going to wash. So what we're going to have to do then is we are going to have to use one of the flavours on the back. So I only need a full bag. So what we'll do is what do you think would go with Pina Carver? She needs sherbet. I think I'll go with her then, isn't it? Yeah. So we'll use the sherbet flavour. That'll go with it quite nicely. It's only for a few flowers. So in our normal flavour ice and sugar, you have to beat the butter until it's nearly white. So sorry, this is going on again. So if you've got any questions, if you want to ask, anything from this one, you have to shout out really loud. Crisp and dry. Julie said she's had got no end of problems get, getting treks. I really don't know about crisp and dry. I don't know. I've got to be honest, I don't use treks. It's only because Christina and Valerie use it. And um, so I really don't know. But the one thing is now with the mixer, okay, when you add the treks. Yeah. When you. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Let's do that. When you Thanks, add, Jenny. Yeah, well done. Good job, somebody's paying attention. Uh, Maria, you left the door open when one of the dogs is coming. So, <laughs> keep kicking out. So, little Barney has sneaked in the kitchen because Maria nipped out and Barney sneaked in. So, we'll just kick Barney out of the kitchen. And like I say, it is my own kitchen. So, um, Barney's a clever little soul and he, when he knows I'm in the kitchen cooking or John does, he's there for all the scraps. What he hasn't realised is it's cake and he doesn't get cake. So, uh, Anyhow, so let's put the uh, sherbet in, uh, sherbet in, pineapple in. So with the Queen of Hearts mix, where I beat the living daylights out of our mix, okay, with the Queen of Hearts you don't, you only mix for another 30 seconds, 20 to 30 seconds. So, there he is, Barney John. Let's kick Barney out. Barney, Hi. just one second. Barney, come on, do your soul. Good boy. You can tell he's my dog, he did as he told straight away. So, <laughs> so, 
So we're going to pop in the pineapple. And John, do you want to pass me a clean tea towel? Now, the good thing is when you, the thing is when you add your flavoured icing sugar, it doesn't matter whether you use flavoured icing sugar or plain icing sugar, okay? Chop it in first. If you don't chop it in first, we're going to have a nice big cloud up in the air and we're all going to be covered in it. So chop it in. Let's get it all mixed in. Now, some of you have got um, covers on top of your mixer that you can put over the top and that will help you. Unfortunately, as much as I love KitchenAid, I don't know why they've not been on to me yet because I'm always going on about them. Um, as much as I love my KitchenAid, the actual cover for protecting the ice cloud is actually a waste of time. And I've got a whole load of them in the cupboard. And I don't know why I keep them, I should just bin them. They're not actually worth the paper they're written on, I don't think. So, and I just need the kettle again, John. Now, at this stage, you can add, this is what I add. In the winter, you can add condensed milk, boiling water, okay, cold water or cold milk. I usually like to add condensed milk. I'm not going to add that today, okay, um, mainly because I'm going to put it away in the other kitchen. So I'm just going to add some boiling water. Um, and I only do that in the winter because in the summer, the uh, margarine, uh, the butter, when it's been left out at room temperature, gets really soft. So we're going to add that into this one. And this is just going to help incorporate it. So that was one tablespoon of boiling water. So then we're going to put this back on and I'm going to beat the living daylights out of it. Now you do have to be careful. If your butter is too soft and you don't add liquid, because all you'll do then is you'll make loads of holes in the butter and we don't really want that. But my butter was quite firm. So let's just get this back on. shot just to get it going I don't want to turn it on full pelt yet Oops. that's what happens when you turn it on full pelt there we go that's all I'll get together So this is still a little bit too firm for me, okay. So I'm just going to add a little bit more water, another tablespoon of water, in fact not quite a tablespoon. How much condensed milk would you add? Same. Water or condensed milk is the same. And don't add it all at once. Add it, mix it. If it feels right, okay, it's right. If you need more, add more. Don't throw it all in, because once you throw it all in, you can't take it back. So let's just do this. I got the people are asking that this is the missing part of why you're using friends. And the mixer stops off that one. So the reason we're doing the Trex version is when Valerie and Christina were here just before Christmas um, doing their buttercream flowers, that is their recipe that they use and they believe that you can use that recipe worldwide and it will stay stable in whatever country and I know that they've been around the world and they've actually put their cakes outside in the sun. I'm sure they've not put them out there for hours but basically the buttercream stays stable. So that here in the UK, we don't have to do that because we're always freezing our socks off when we're trying to get our buttercream soft. 
So where they made one to get it stable, um, there we go, that's nice. So that's our buttercream there, so yeah. It's a bit difficult for me at this angle, so at this angle here. So your buttercream needs to be, I probably prefer it a bit softer than this. Okay, but we're just going to leave it like that. You need to be able to swirl it quite easily. So I don't know whether you can see that. You see that, John? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now the Queen of Hearts one, okay, so because we've got people watching from all around the world. Now, there is brands, you won't be able to get treks in all countries, but I think um, there's a chart on the Queen of Hearts Girls page of what the brand is in particular countries. That's a substitute to Trex. So, let's do this one. So you can see this one's really nice and soft. So, and then I'm just going to put in the sherbet in this one. the icing sugar to the Queen of Hearts mix, you don't need to beat the living daylights out of it. Yeah. All they ask you to do is, is fold it in and give it a quick mix. So we're just going to fold it in. Not fold it in, we're going to chop it in for exactly the same reasons. And if I remember right, Maria, do we have to add some water to it as well? Yes. So, Maria's just going to get her phone because I've just remembered that they suggest you add water. Yeah. So, add the treks and water. Right, I should have added the water ages ago, but we're going to have to add it now. So, we should have added the, tre the water when we did the treks and the butter together. But we're going to add it now. I don't think it'll make that much difference just one tablespoon of water so there you go that's chopped in and then I'm just going to give this a quick beat in the mixer they don't advise for their mix for you to beat the living daylights out of it okay so how's our cakes doing right our cakes are ready I think so if just go over here a minute let me just get my cake tester I think John's telling me my cakes are ready so this is the first one. These have been in 40 minutes. Can you see from there, John? Which camera on this one? So can you see? Do you want to bring that camera over? So you can see how lovely and light that is. Let's pop the tester in. That's come out nice and clear. This is a struggle. Can you smell all the strawberries in the oven? Smells great, doesn't it? So I'm going to take this one out and I am going to quickly just pop it on here for you guys. So I'm just going to pop that one on here. Okay, let's see if the other one's ready. Yeah, that one's ready as well. So we'll turn the oven off. Okay, and you can see that which camera around, John, on this one. So you can see that the cake, the sponge is just breaking away from the pan, okay? And when you've spit up, they smell good, don't they? Now, I've got to be honest, it's at this stage that I prefer not to add any buttercream. So if this was my strawberry milkshake now, I would just put a layer of jam in the middle and then I would add water to the flavoured icing sugar and just drizzle it over the top. Or my best bit is just have one single sponge and layer it over the top. Just lay it over the top, no jam, no nothing. So we're just going to do that. So I've got five minutes with the other cake. Go back round here, John. So let's put this back on the mixer for 30 seconds. Get it all incorporated. So it's less beating for this. Once you add the icing sugar, it's less beating. Yeah? So we're here. Yeah. 
So the only reason I'm doing this tonight is just to go over the mix for you guys. And we're just gonna beat that for 30 seconds. So let me get my timer on. Believe it or not, it's only been seven seconds so far. You know, when you're counting seconds, it's actually a long time. So we are on 25 seconds. There you go, 30 seconds now. And I have to say, this is really nice and creamy. Yeah. So let me just show you this now. This is lovely and creamy. So I've never made this mix before. I've actually done one of the Queen of Hearts um, courses in Australia, and this was the mix that they used. And uh, when the girls came here in uh, December, um, this was again the mix that they used. So this is their mix. So let me just scrape it in. Right, so which camera are we on? So you can see now, do you know what? I a feeling I may well be converted because there's actually no air holes in there. And that, I'm gonna have to try the Russian piping tips with this afterwards and see what it comes out like. So I think I could possibly be a convert. So well done, Valerie and Christina. Yeah. So let me just get rid of my tools here for the sink. Yeah. And then so this one is the Queen of Hearts one. Let's get rid of this, let's put the kettle away, and let's start cleaning up. So I just need to check that oven. Is that 40 minutes now for the next one? Yes. Yeah? So any questions, anybody? Any questions, John? There's been a few questions about the what's gone into the buttercream recipe, but I think other people have actually answered them all at the moment. So thank you yeah. very much for that. Yep, so thanks guys, all you guys who've been on watching me before, you've all been helping out before and I really do appreciate it and so does John. Because when you're watching, I can't, as you can see, I can't type back on the computer. So I have to wait for them to come up and then sometimes a whole load of questions come up together and we can't answer them. And then there's repeat questions as well. And then you get people who've only just joined us who will say what you're doing. Not being funny, but I can't actually repeat one hour's work in five minutes. So um, now we're going to actually make our flowers. So I think the next set of cakes will be due out, will they? Can I give you that to wipe down? And let's go and get the next set of cakes. So, John, to go. Yeah, so let's just see what these are like. Yep, they are. So this is the normal Victoria sponge. You can do them a bit darker if you want, and I'm actually just going to leave them in the oven just for a little bit longer, just to make it a little bit darker. That's just my personal choice. They look a bit anemic to me, but they are actually cooked. So I'm just going to give them couple more minutes in the oven and we'll take them out then. So let's use the Queen of Hearts buttercream, no let's use my buttercream because that's what most of you use and if you can't get Trex I want to make it easy for you. So we're going to just mix up one colour and the colour that we're going to use is, so I just need a spoon Maria. Very much so we're going to use my buttercream so we're just going to put that amount in and really that's far too much okay for what we need tonight it's far too much in fact let's just take it out so then I'm going to add some coloring now I already made some of these flowers before and I used the raspberry coloring yeah but what we're going to do now is we're going to use the burgundy coloring thank you I'm just going to add a little drop little drop there. 
So if anybody doesn't know what this range is, it's a colour splash range. And I'm just going to put a nice little bit in there. So you only need a little bit of colour. So the good thing is, you're only going to make two colours tonight. You're going to make a silver grey and you're going to make this burgundy colour or raspberry colour or pink colour, whatever you want. But we're going to make these. Now we're going to use free Wilton tips tonight, yeah? We're going to use the 102 petal, the 103 petal and the 104 petal. So how to cut the bag, the petals, which camera am I on? This one? So is that in front of the camera? Yeah? So can you see how it's on an angle guys? This is the smallest one, the 102. There is a 101 but we're using the 102. You'll see it's on an angle and I'm not sure <coughs> Can you see that down? Yep, you can see that it's wider at the bottom and thinner at the top. So, so this is the 101, uh, 102, sorry. And then we have exactly the same, the 103. Take a little bit further away. The 103, is that better? Yep. Yeah. And then I'm gonna cut the bag. I've done a leaf tip, but you don't need a leaf, but. I like to do leaves. So then we're going to use the bigger one, which is the 104. So I'm just going to cut the bag for you. And it's probably at this stage of the game, I'm actually going to sit down because it gets a bit tiring. Now, see there, the bag? Can you see how it's chamfered there? Yeah. So what we've got is you've got a wide end and a thin end. The thin end we're going to keep to the top because that means it's the top of the petal and I want the fat wide end. So I'm going to keep that at the bottom. So the, the thin end is going to be in line with this ruffle and the thicker end is going to be directly underneath. Now because it's chamfered, I don't want to cut the bag straight. I'm going to cut it, so I'm just going to squeeze it back a bit. So I'm just going to squeeze, cut it on the angle there. Yeah? So that it pops out like that and that's all you do with all of them then we are going to start filling our bags with buttercream now when i do the roses for you i always say go up the seam because i want the color on the outer edge with this being the cherry blossom we need the color on the bottom for the center so what we're going to do now is we're going to get our color so if you think about it, there's the thin end, there's the wider end, and we are going to put our colour on the bottom. So not the top, like I do for the roses, just on the bottom. Yeah? So have you got that, guys? So it's on the bottom. It doesn't have to be neat. And then we get another spatula. And we're just going to fill in as I'm making a mess, we're just going to fill in the other end with white. Now, you can use a jug if you want to, and normally I don't fill in this way, I don't know why I'm doing it this way, but we're just going to push that in so it all goes down that side. So just hang on a minute. So I've made a right mess of this one, I'll do the next one properly. That's the thing when you come live. So I hope you're enjoying this guys and I hope you're going to share it afterwards as well. So now you can see what I'm on about. We've got white on the top which is going to be the outer of the petals and pink underneath. Yeah. So I'm just going to give that a twist and I brought in some things today. I've used them on the other bags and they're really handy for this type of work. So I sell these on the website as well. If you go to the part called Wilton we sell these really like strong elastic band things. So let me just take this one off, okay? And I think you get 12 in a packet, I think. Not sure how many, okay? And what we're going to do is, just so we're not squeezing buttercream, we're just gonna tie this round the bag twice. And then that thick stubbly bit 
we're just going to push through there and that will help keep all the buttercream in yeah so there we go so that's number one let's see if we can do a better job of the other one let me wipe my hands a moment any questions john so we're going to do the same again okay and this is the wheel turn 102 this is the smallest one so we've done the largest one we've done the smallest one i'm just going to fold down the bag because i find if i fold the bag like that it's easier so we're going to get the pink again and remember it's at the bottom of the bag so i think you can see it there can they see that john clearly so we've got that at the bottom of the bag and then I'm just going to get the white. I'm just going to put a big spoonful in there and push that in. And you'll see that go in down there. Take that. That's a bit neater, isn't it? It is a bit tricky to do this, but you will get it done, don't worry. So we've got this one done as well, yeah. So you can see that the thin end again, white, and the bottom end pink. We're now gonna do the medium nozzle, which is the 103. I'm gonna do the whole thing again. So let me just do this. So I'm gonna pop it over my hand because I find this easier. You have to find your own way. Some of you may put this in a glass jar and hold it in the glass jar, but I like to hold it in my hand. So, so don't worry if you get it elsewhere. Any questions, John? Okay, and then I'm just gonna put that there. So that's the three bags done now in the three sizes. So we've got the 104, the 103, and the 102, okay? Now we're gonna make some gray buttercream. So it's like a silver color. I've already made this earlier today, and I'm just gonna show you how to make it now. So we only need a tiny bit. So just a spoonful will be more than enough. In fact, let's just put a bit more there, sweetly. I tell you, I'm on fire in here, guys. I mean, I'm fire absolutely boiling. So there we go, okay? And then we're gonna use the Colour Splash Black. Now, a lot of you have bought the whole uh, range of colours, 29 in the colour tube that we do on offer. And some of you do wonder what you're gonna do with the black. Well, now you're gonna make it grey. Okay, so we're only going to put a tiny bit. See that? That's all you need. You see that? Just that tiny bit. And we're gonna make this into a nice silver gray. And the thing with this color splash is less is more. So add your color, add your color. And then if you need more, you can add more. And here, I don't know I've done it, I've actually put more in than I did earlier. So, so we've got this lovely silver grey colour. Now cherry blossom comes off silver looking trees and that's why we're going to have this grey colour for our branches on our cake. So what a lovely silver colour that is just by using the black. Yeah, and you can make it, which camera are we on John? Was we on there anyhow? Or was we there? We were there. So was I talking to that camera? No, you can't. All right, okay. So can I show them on this camera? You can show them on the other one. Okay. So you can see that lovely grey colour there from the black, yeah? So you only need a tiny bit. And I actually used less in that one earlier, yeah? So what we're going to do then is we're going to put that in five round. So 
So we're going to use a Wilton five round and we're going to put this in. Uh, let's just put this one in. Now, there is another nozzle that it suggested using, and that was a Wilton one. And I'm going to show you why I didn't use it. And um, you lot can do exactly what you want to do, or you can do my method. So let's just stick this grey in here. Now, oh, my sponge needs to come out of the oven. But yeah, it's gone from light brown now to uh, dark brown, I bet. Just one second, guys. Sorry, did I swear then? You're after nine. Yeah. <laughs> right. Do you know what I think I might do that turn the oven up for you? Just yeah, very right, good. Let me just take this out of the oven, sorry. I'm that gross now, I forgot. There you go. Yeah, there. Much better colour. Same colour as that. And you can see it's done exactly the same. So this is the normal Victoria sponge, and this is the Victoria sponge without the um, with the flavoured icing sugar. No difference whatsoever, okay? No difference in texture or anything. So it's really very nice. So, let me pull my chair over. I just need to have a drink of water a moment. And then we need to start making these. So you do need a tray, okay? And you do need some parchment paper cut up into little squares. So let's put the lid on. So parchment paper, you can buy pre-cut squares or you can just cut them yourself and I cut them myself. So we're going to have those here and I am going to put that there, that there for the moment. Okay, you can move everything out of the way John. Okay, so are we ready guys? So John is going to try and work out how you can see this best. I'm going to, to remind me to do the leaf as well. So we are going to use Valerie and Christina's flower holder. Don't pass me those, John. So you do need these. You don't need this one necessarily, but I think this is great and it's very useful because we all get tired and you need to fill up your buttercream bags as well. So this is the holder, yeah? So what we're going to do is, we're just gonna put a little bit of buttercream on there. And while we do that now, what we need to do first, so what can you see there, John? Can you see it very well? Mm -hmm. Are we in the right place here? Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is, I need to let this color run out. So as you can see, it's all pink. Now, can you see the white? And the pink. Now the way I've shown you, if you do it in reverse, that would be great for the edges for your roses. Yeah? So that's that one. So we know that that one's fine. Let's get this one going. So it comes out pink first, but we need it so it's coming out white. Yeah? So do you like that then, girls and guys? I hope you're all going to give this a go because you know what? Once I show you how easy this is, you're going to make such a pretty cake and everyone thinks is going to think you're amazing. And it's so easy and if I can do it, you lot can do it. So that's in there. So I just put a little bit of um, buttercream on there and we're going to stick our first piece of paper on. Now, the nozzle we're going to use first is it's always good, as I say, to have your cloth. I uh, can't see what this one is. I think it's the smallest one. No, it's the middle one. So, let me just see. Where am I on the camera now? We're up there. Right, okay. And are you close in there, John? Maria's not in the way, is she? Yeah? So, what we're going to do is, so you've got to hold the base down. The base is the widest bit. Remember, we keep the thin bit with the ruffle at the top. So what we're actually going to do is, we are just going to squeeze and do that. See that? Did you see that happen? And we're going to do five of those. They don't have to be neat. Yeah. So we're going to do five of those, five of those little flowers, and we're going to put it in our pan. 
So anybody who's a professional at doing this is probably having a complete meltdown. Maybe Christina and Valerie are, but you know, this is us. This is what I said about hobby baking. It's about enjoying yourself. Sorry, am I there? Yeah, perfect. So just got to do five of those, swirl it round, and we're just going to bring it up again. Yeah. So anybody who's professional, close your eyes now. So I'm not going to do a whole load of these. I'm just going to do you four or five of each size. So we're going to go up, round, round, and you're doing five petals. Yeah, five petals. Take that off. What do you think? Do you think it's easy, guys? And if you've noticed, I've not put any more, as I call it, glue, but it isn't glue, it's buttercream. So again, we're going to do one, two, three, four, five. So anybody who's a professional now, go away or close your eyes. This is for us hobby bakers who are sat here, believe it or not, enjoying themselves. And in fairness, I had a go at these this afternoon for the very first time, like I always do. I wing it on the day. I was quite impressed with myself. So for my first time, so we've done five that size, and then we're gonna go up to the next size. Let me just put a bit more buttercream. Any questions, John? So we're gonna go, we're gonna do the smaller size because we did the middle size before. So is that the right angle? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're just gonna do exactly the same. Can you see that lovely tinge of pink coming through in the center? Yeah. Just one of those. Another parchment. So we'll do a few of these. So I know it might be a bit boring watching me do these. I don't know whether you think it is boring. So you just make it basically making a U shape and then you're doing that U shape again underneath. Can you see what I'm doing? I am trying to do it at a funny angle, but I hope you can tell. Can you tell what I'm doing? So we've done two of those, just got three more to do. Okay. So again, and now this is with my buttercream, okay? This is not with the Queen of Hearts buttercream because I thought I'd show you. Now this blossom is going to have a six petal because I was busy talking to you. I wasn't realising I'd gone too far. So, and you know what would be nice with this if you did it in different colours? Can you imagine doing lemon ones as well? What are the ones with like lemons in called? Um, so sorry, I need another parchment. Two more. You could do them all in different colours. But... So Maria's just telling me I've got buttercream on my face. Has it gone? No, it's not gone, sorry. Gone? <laughs> it's all right, I normally dribble it all down my mouth and onto my chest when I go out for a meal and show John up properly. <laughs> Don't think John and I have had a meal yet without me dropping it on my chest. So there you go. Sorry, that was going to have to have a six one as well. So I'll put that one in as well. Does it matter? See, if you make mistakes, what does it matter? Who's going to know? Who's actually going to sit there when we put this cake together and go, do you know what, you've got six petals on there. <coughs> so. We've got five of those. So that's that one done. So again, if you're going to make this cake, it's ideal if you make a load of cupcakes with it as well. And uh, then you can do your big cake, your big celebration cake. And then you can use the rest of this for your, in your buttercream for your smaller cupcakes. So this is the big nozzle now. So I'm going to make really nice big blossoms. Come to a bit. Yep. Now what Valerie and Christina will say is with their buttercream, which is different. Do you see how I've got that little broken edge? Or with their cream, that doesn't happen. But if I'm honest, I'm not particularly bothered whether you guys or not, it's up to you. So what do you think guys, are you liking this? 
and um, I actually, because of our new camera setup, we can't actually see whether you're liking it or not, but hopefully we're getting loads of thumbs up. So if anybody wants to tell John whether we're getting a thumbs up or not, that'd be great. Your appreciation is always welcome. So I've done two of the large ones, we're just going to do three more. Two more. Do they like it, John? What are they saying? Yes, lots of thumbs up and likes going across. Oh, can you see them? No, well, I've got I've got another phone here. Oh, have you? Oh, yeah. right. You didn't tell me about that one. Okay, so we're going to do that. And I'm just going to do one more, and then we're finished on the flowers, mainly because I've already got some in the fridge already. So that's our flowers. Now, if my bags had got empty or had got tired and I needed to put it down or my mobile phone's ringing, sorry, wrong camera, or my mobile phone is ringing or something like that, there's nothing worse, or the kids come running in or the dog comes running in, there's nothing worse when you're mid-flow. So this little stand is fantastic to just suddenly put it down, leave it there, wipe your hands, your hands will get covered in buttercream all the time and you can tidy up. So those are on the website. I highly recommend that you buy them. So um, they're well worth it. I know some of you have already. So I'm just gonna bring my cake table over now. Now, when I, when I was having a look at the little Wilton demo, they suggested using a 1M piping tip. Now I actually haven't got a 1M piping tip. It's a very fine piping tip. And um, I actually haven't got one. So what I did was I cut the piping bag here so that it, which camera can I go on? So I cut the piping bag there so that I could just get a really fine bit of buttercream out. It's set now. There, are. can you see that little fine bit that I just got out there? But I have to be honest, I have to be honest. When I tried to do a little bead, being, I don't know whether it's my age or whatever, but I got shaky hands and everything else. And I thought, you know what? I need to make my life a lot easier than this. So what I did was, I then got out the 101,000 sprinkles, as you do, thinking, well, what a clever girl am I? I'm gonna pick out all the pink ones. So that started for a while until I ended up putting other mixed colors on, so it drove me mad. So then I found these in the cupboard. I did think I had some red ones somewhere, but uh, I did, I couldn't find them. So anyhow, so I've had to use these. So I'm just gonna take my glasses off now. So you pick five of these. I'm not gonna do them all because I think they will drive you insane watching what I'm gonna do. So you pick five of those. I don't know where John can see on the camera there. And you don't put them in the center of the cake, uh, of the flower, sorry. You just put them one on each petal now see there, I've dropped the black one in. Let's get them all out. So you just drop one on each petal. You know what's going to happen when you're live. It all goes wrong, doesn't it? So I'm shaking here, which I don't know why. Come on, little friend. So what are you saying, John? John's asking me to wrap it up. She might get the one out of the fridge. Pardon? I'm going to get the other ones out of the fridge, but I've got to show you one done. I can't see that detail. You can't no. see that detail. Well, just let me put a couple on. So sorry, guys, but if you can, buy just red hundreds and thousands. It's going to make your life a lot easier, or pink ones. And you're just going to sprinkle them on. Yeah. So I'm just going to get the ones out of the fridge of what we did earlier because otherwise I'm really just going to get those out so I can just show you what we did. So while she's doing that, John can keep the camera on here and they go anywhere, just one on each petal, yeah? Okay, so I will finish those off later. So I'm going to get Maria to pop those in the fridge any out of the way 
but these are the ones that we did earlier okay so can you see that once you put those little beads on how nicer they are now you can are you on the right camera john which camera are we on oh we're on this camera at the top That's so funny isn't it four cameras in the kitchen and i don't know which one anymore so what do you think of those guys do you like them okay so easy so my personal preference is is to put the little pink hundreds and thousands on. If you want to go to the trouble of piping them, you know what, feel free, but I'm gonna carry on doing it this way. So I'm just gonna give these to Maria to put in the fridge, just put these on top of the other tray. And then do you wanna pass me that big cake back? You put those in first. So if you put those in there first. Do you want the cake? Yes, please, just put those in on top of the silver tray, Maria. Super. And then what we're going to do now is with our rustic cake that's been crumb coated, okay, we're just going to put a bit more buttercream on. Yeah. So we're going to put a bit more buttercream on now. Now, you guys who are perfectionists, okay, at this stage you can either sugar paste your cake if you want to but anybody who follows me knows that I can't sugar paste a cake there's a lady come out with a new fantastic tool that's due to be released in March and she's going to send me a sample to test um, because she says I'll be able to sugar paste a cake uh, smooth not sugar paste a cake I will be able to get perfect sides with a new tool so I can't wait for that to come out but at the moment we are just rough coating again so all I'm doing is just putting on a bit more buttercream and as I said before this is rustic so those of you who don't like rustic basically it's a cheap way of telling you that I can't put buttercream on nice and smooth but I don't care this is about me having fun and producing a cake that I think will be acceptable and hopefully you guys are going to do the same. So we are just going to do that. Yeah. Get some more of this buttercream out. Now really what I should be doing is I should be putting my spatula in a jar of hot water because it will make it easier but time is going on and I want to get this cake decorated yeah okay so that's gonna do and I'm gonna get my scraper out now this is one of Alexander's scrapers we've had these for a long time they're called which camera we on this one right a four-sided scraper you've got this design this one, this one, and this one. This one is my favorite. And if I can just move it over to that camera there, this is my favorite side, okay? So what we're gonna do now is, if John can just stay on that side. Mm -hmm. So Maria, so all we're gonna do is our rustic look. So we are just going to scrape it round, okay? Just to give it, this rustic scrape yeah that's all we're going to do I'm just going to go around a couple of times with it and then we're going to come off and that's all we're going to do for our rustic look Then we're going to get our grey buttercream, which was in, let me clean the top, one second. And let me just clean this, one second, so it's all nice and clean. This cloth has been washed several times tonight. You should always have a cloth that's just for your baking. So it's just a, clean, a dish cloth that's clean, that's only for your baking, okay? So, as I say, this one, you'll have seen Maria and John been washing this one several times. 
So where did I put my grey? So now we're going to start painting some little branches and all we're going to do is we're going to start here, we're on this camera John, so we're just going to start here with our little branches and I've got a hole in that bag so I'm just going to put another bag, one second. Just so it doesn't squirt out all over the place. Just give me a minute. So it's not meant to be looking like trees, this. it's just meant to be branches. So we're just going to. So I don't know what you can see on the camera. Am I in the right camera? Right. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And all we're going to do is we're just going to do this. And then we're going to do it again around here. Just do a couple off the side there. So we're going to come up here now. The good thing with this is you don't have to be neat. So all you guys who watch me on a regular basis, tell all our newbies what all this is about. This is about you guys who are not professionals, who are at home, who just want to enjoy yourself and do simple cake decorating. So I hope you like what you see so far. So we've done this with the black colour splash gel and made it into a nice grey because the blossom comes off a grey, well a silver branch. Yeah, so we'll just do a few more little twigs. Doesn't matter if you knock one. So we're just going to do that there. Are you getting the idea what's happening, guys? Right, okay, so Maria, pass us the flowers, love, out the fridge. So the flowers, the reason we've done them on the parchment paper is that you then put them in the fridge or the freezer, okay? Don't get them out until you need them. Are we on this camera still? I'm on this one. Don't get them out till you need them. If you get them out before you need them, okay, they are going to go really soft. So what we want to do now is, which camera? Can we go on this one? So what we're going to do now is we're going to peel it off the parchment paper and we're going to stick it there. So I'm going to put all the big ones on first. Yeah. And this is our cherry blossom cake. And I'm hoping I'm going to see you guys making this too. So we're just going to, just pulling off the big flowers first. Do we like it so far guys, what you can see? Yeah, what did I say John? And then we're going to pull off the smaller ones. John's not responding at the moment. There's always a bit of delay. Always a bit of delay, yeah. Yeah, lots of likes coming through now. Thank you very much, everyone. See how easy this is to pull together. So it's very important that you put these in the fridge, take them out the last minute, because it doesn't matter if they soften once they're on the cake. You just don't want them softening before they go on the cake. There we go. Get some more baby ones off. Like I say, it doesn't have to be nice and neat. So I'm just going to put a couple on the side there. Am I in view of the camera? See how you can hold them? So I'm just going to put that there. Yeah, just push them on, don't be scared. Yeah. Oops, I can even drop them, which is what I just did. And then I want a really tiny one for there. What else do we want? See, see what I mean? It doesn't have to be perfectly decorated. This, I think it looks really well. It's coming together really well. Do you not think so? Yeah, put a couple of.
cherry blossoms on yeah, the top of the Yeah, positive color. comments. Brilliant. Love that. Love it. Yeah. So Good. pretty. Yeah. So let me just... try and make this cake. Well, I hope you all do try it. Remember, guys, all of you who do try it, don't be scared or show me. So many of you have got so brave now because, you know, most of you who follow me are professionals. And, you know, don't be frightened of the other professionals looking at your cake or laughing. They won't laugh. I'm not a professional and I come on live to show you. And, uh, and I've had to wing this today. This is the first time I've done these, I swear to you. Even Maria came in and she went, ooh, they're pretty. And John came home from work. What a black bead there. John came home from work and even he was amazed. He's always amazed every week. What can, what can you use if you haven't got a flower nail? If you, have, you don't, to be fair, I suppose you could use a polystyrene, a bit of polystyrene, I should think. The only thing is with the flower. In fact, nail, someone, someone's actually just said a good idea. The bottom of a, the bottom of a stemmed wine glass. That's a good idea. Yeah. But would you be able to hold the wine glass going round though, spinning just, it? Just turn it upside down. Yes, I know. But you've got a big wine glass there. Let's get one out. If you've got a big wine glass in your hand there, let me just say. Maybe a champagne glass you could use. Maybe you could use one of those. But you have got to try and move it around without banging that. Maybe you could use one of those. Yep, could work. But um, I would invest in a flower nail though. Now the ones that the Queen of Hearts do here, these are extra large, so you can do massive flowers. And also, when I show you how to do roses, so we're gonna make something for Valentine's Day on Thursday, it's Valentine's Day we're doing, so we're gonna make some roses with using the nifty nozzles, and we're going to use this as well. So these are really great, so I would invest in one of these. One of these, again, are perfect, because that hole is there for you to sit in. You could use a polystyrene block, but then you need to make a hole, and then you're gonna to have to push it in and then squeak it out again, make my skin crawl. But it's entirely up to you. But these, I would certainly say, invest them. You can wash them in hot water and then no problems at all. So I think we've got enough flowers on there. I don't think we need to put any more on actually. Do you guys? I think I might just put one on here. See, they've started to soften already because I've been talking, so that one broke. I'm just going to put one there. There you go. So then what we're going to do then is we are going to... Um, I brought some magic sparkles because you know that I am the queen for glitter. Okay. So you can use two glitters. Which camera will? Now, you can use this glitter. So I like this one. This is my favourite one. And this one is the hologram white. And it's made by Rainbow Dust. It's classed as non-edible okay and it's for um, cake decorating purposes only so it very clearly tells you you can use it for cake decorating but you have to pick it off well good luck to you but basically it's not going to do you any harm as well unless you want to eat tons of this stuff then maybe the most you're going to get is a glittery number two so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of that over there to give it that added touch i don't know whether you can see that sparkle could you see that or what, or what we can do is, sorry I'll do it slower, what we can do is, now these are 100% edible and they're on the website, they're called Crystal White Magic Sparkles, so you can, if you want to, use these, and these are like a paper, but they are really shiny, so these, they're more expensive I think, but you could sparkle those over. And I think the whole thing comes together once you have sparkle. I think it's always nice with a bit of bling. So there's two options there. So this one is the Magic Sparkles Christmas White. It's on the website, okay, and that's 100% edible. This is uh, non-toxic, which means it's not going to hurt you. It just means your body doesn't digest it, okay. And I think I prefer this. I'd rather that this come out with number two. So, but this one, you can digest this one. It can go through your whole system. So entirely up to you. So guys, I hope you liked what I've shown you tonight. Maria, if you want to get rid of those back in the fridge. So let's show you the sponges. Push it, that way a bit. Push it to there. Yeah. So let's show you the sponges. And I'm just gonna quickly show you an offer that we've got on at the moment on two nozzles. And I'm gonna just quickly show you how to put those together. 
So I was hoping that my cakes were going to be cool enough for me to decorate for you. So let me just get these sponges out one minute. So let me just sit this here. Okay, let me just sit that on there. So that's up there. So let's pass us those sponges. So these were the ones with the strawberry milkshake. So they're a bit warm still. So we're not going to be able to use these, but what we'll do is we'll decorate with these on our live on Thursday. So look how lovely they are. Yeah. So peel the paper off, look. Really nice. Are we on this camera, John? Yeah, really. Oh, they smell good. They really do smell nice and light. So we're gonna save those until Thursday. What I'll do with these is when they're fully cool tonight, I will put them in the freezer. Do you want to pass me a non one, Laura? Laura Maria. And then this is the normal Victoria sponge. So the normal Victoria sponge, exactly the same way. And this one we've just added flavouring. So both sponges, exactly the same. And if you bake them on a low heat, okay, then look, they come out nice and flat. Yeah? And I will tell you that smells divine. So that strawberry milk milkshake and in there today is pina colada. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cool these down. I'm gonna wrap them three times in cling film. So I'm gonna go once that way and then the other way and back again. I'm gonna pop them in the freezer and on Thursday morning, I'm gonna take them out and I'm gonna decorate them then. And uh, we'll do something for our Valentine's Day theme. On Thursday live, I'm gonna show you how to make a chocolate cake okay victoria sponge because again i know i did it last uh, two thursdays ago but people wanted to know how to make a big cupcake a big cake so i'm going to do that and what else are we doing on thursday maria chocolate cake with valentine's decorations yeah with valentine's decorations and show you all the new things that i've not actually shown you tonight but they are all on the website so if you go to new arrivals on the website you'll see all the new valentine stuff so I hope you've enjoyed tonight, okay? And I do want you to share this page. So it's very important for me to get, you know, get our, get our sessions across to people. And I can only actually do it if you share it. I can't share it myself. Do remember that John, Maria and I give up our time free every Monday and Tuesday to decorate, to show you things, to give you tips and advice. And all I want you to do is get my name up there so that everybody knows who Karen McFarland is from Sugar and Crumbs and you start spreading the word about us good hobby bakers. And Maria has got a question, have you? Can you talk about the cake given? Baking Awards. Ah, right, okay. Cake Heaven Baking Awards, okay. We're up for four sections. Um, the link again is at the top of our page. So when this session finishes tonight, so the link is on the page now at the top. When this is finished, we finish now in about five minutes. Okay, Maria will go and pin this whole session to the top. And Bake in Heaven Cake Awards uh, are there for nominations. And we've been lucky enough to be um, allocated for four categories. Now, the good thing about this is it's not a fix, okay? This is all about genuine votes. The other one was all about one vote and some a team of people deciding whether you were a winner or not. So that there, you know, that... That was just a team of judges. This is about you voting. And I think I think we've got, I don't forget what nominations we voted for. Do you have them, Maria? No? Okay. Do you, I'll read them out to you. So we are for best for beginners, okay? Best customer service, most useful decorating tool, and best brand. So best for beginners, our Facebook Lives have got to be, we're showing you all what to do. Best customer service, I think we're excellent. Read our five star reviews, it'll tell you. We do make mistakes and we're honest enough to admit them, but overall we do we offer a great service. Most useful decorating tool, well that's gotta be our nifty nozzles. They're amazing, they're genuine Russian piping tips. And best brand, it's gotta be sugar and crumbs. All the time, sugar and crumbs. So make sure you vote for us in those four categories, okay? So is there any final questions before we go? Maria's just chopped a phone <laughs> in the buttercream. So let me just put this cake back in here. So we'll decorate these on Thursday. We do a live session on a Thursday morning at 11 o'clock, okay? Now, if you miss tonight's session, 
or Thursday session, it always goes to YouTube a couple of hours later. So what we've done today is we've made a Victoria sponge cake, we've layered it, we've put it together, we've done a crumb coat. Those professionals out there, you know what? You can make a better job, well, well done to you. This is for my guys who are hobby bakers and we've done a rustic coat and this is our cherry blossom cake and I hope you've enjoyed it. So if anybody wants to say anything or give me the thumbs up or whatever, I'll be really appreciative of that. And I don't know how many people have been watching this session tonight, but uh, hopefully you all share it and nothing would be better for me. How many views have we got live actually at the moment? So I don't know how many we've got live, but I'd really like it as soon as this session finishes, you all ping and share and pass it on with your friends. So is this the top of the cake, John? Can you see this? So what I'm going to say guys, this is our cherry blossom cake. Thank you for joining me tonight. I hope you've really, really enjoyed it. Thank you for John and Maria being in the kitchen and helping again. And thank you to you guys for coming along and giving up your time and watching me make this. And I hope you've really enjoyed it. Make sure you make one and share it with us all to see. Otherwise, I'm going to see you on Thursday morning at 11 o'clock or next Monday at 8 p.m. So that's a good night from me. Bye-bye.